Hey, welcome to uh, Cool Codes. So this is a project that I have been working on. It's a VCS, a version control system, just like GitHub and everything. And I have been working on this for, I think, uh, about two weeks now. So I just uh, worked on some of the basic, basic functiona functionality, such as initializing the repository. So as of now, you can initialize your repository and then you can create a new commit and you can then load uh, different commits but when it comes to loading different commits I really haven't uh, worked on it much as of now you can only load the initial commit so uh, lo loading initial commit is basically going to uh, res restore your project and your project files to how it was when you initially created uh, the repository so let's see uh, this application in working so we have this directory and we have file.txt and then we have a subfolder and inside the subfolder we have file2.txt if we check out file.txt the content is, is going to be as follows this is the original content of file.txt and then if we check out file2.txt the content is going to be this is file2.xtt original content so uh, everything looks good let's initialize our repository how do we do that we are going to run our application and we are going to be presented with three options we can initialize the repository we can create a new commit and we can also load uh, uh, the initial commit so we are going to initialize our our repository and let's call this go repo sorry let's just call it Goku and voila it's done if we go back to the directory we can see that we have a, a new folder called dot goflex and this folder is going to hold all of the things that's going to be uh, essential for our vcs to work and by the way the name of the vcs i gave it is uh, goflex goflex vcs so let's check out some of the files so firstly we are going to be checking out goflex repo this is going to hold all of the information uh, about the repository so if we go to beautify this is how it looks we are going to be saving the name of the project the name of the creator the date it was created and also whenever we create a repository we automatically create a branch and for the branch we automatically create a commit so uh, we have an initial branch which is going to be the starting branch and we have an initial commit and since this two uh, this are the only thing that exist when we create our repository they are also automatically our active branch and active commit okay then we have uh, branches db.json this is going to hold a list of branches that we are going to be creating throughout our project as of now we only have one that is our initial branch so this is it we just have one element inside the uh, list and then we have coolflex snap db.json so we have to talk about what snapshots are whenever we create a commit we also create a snapshot a snapshot is basically going to snap uh, the structure of your project it's going to have uh, all of the files and folders in a list uh, that your project has during that specific commit so if you paste this we only have one snapshot because we only have one commit which is the initial commit and then a snapshot is going to have an ID and the ID is going to be basically the combination of uh, the branch ID and the commit ID separated with two dots in between and then we have files as an array and this is going to be uh, all of the files that your project has when this snapshot was taken and then we have branches folder inside branches we have this uh, weird looking folder and this is basically the ID of the branch so we just have one branch which is the I initial branch and this uh, folder name is the ID of that specific branch and if you enter the branch we have commit db.json and this is going to hold all of the commits that we uh, make for a branch so we only have the initial commit as of now so we only have one element 
So let's have a look at how a comet is going to look. A comet is going to have a uh, UID. It's going to have a name, which is initial comet. And then we also have comments. We have the date the comet was created and we ha have the branch ID. <coughs> so this comet belongs to this branch ID. And then we also have an array uh, called children branch comet. So what this does is it's going to hold all of the comets we make in the future that is going to inherit from this specific comet. And it's going to be much clearer once we make our second comet. And then we have diffs folder. Inside diffs we have two uh, files and these two files represent the, uh, the two files that we have in our project. One of them is file.txt and the other one is file2.txt. So let's open just one just one of them, okay? We are not gonna open both of them. Just one of them is going to be enough to give you an idea. So if we open, we can see that it holds a list of diff models. So a diff model is going to hold uh, the difference between, oh sorry, the difference of a file between different co comets. So since we only have one comet, we only have one diff model. This is the ID of the uh, diff model and just like previously, this is a combination of the branch ID and the comet ID. And that's how you get the ID of the diff. And then diff is going to hold the, uh, the difference between different comets for that specific file. And since this is the uh, original diff, we don't really have anything to compare uh, the file with. So it's just going to copy and paste the content of that file as its diff. And then we have the commit ID which uh, to which this diff belongs to. We also have the branch ID to which this diff belongs to. And then we have a boolean that is going to determine if this was its first diff. And this is very important because in the future when we want to make new comments or when we want to load different comments, we have to start from the initial diff. Whenever we are going to be loading uh, the file content, we always need to start from the initial uh, diff. That's why, and this is what we use to determine if the element is the initial diff. And this might be a bit complicated, but it's not something that you have to totally understand. So, uh, since we now know how our project, how the repository is structured, let's make a new comment. Okay, wait a minute. Before we make a new comment, let's um, do this. Let's go, uh, open up file.txt and change the content. This is the edited content of file.txt. Okay. Ha ha ha. And let's enter subfolder and let's make, uh, let's change this as well. Oops, not the original anymore. Cry me a river. Okay. Good. So we have changed the content of file.txt. We have also changed the content of file2.txt. And this. And now we are going to be making a new comet. Okay, so if you go to, uh, if we select two, we are going to be, uh, we are going to be told to uh, name the comet. We are going to call it second comet. Okay. So if we go back to our project, everything looks the same. But if we enter kuflex and we go to snap uh, and we go to our kuflex repo.json, have a look at this. Things might look as if nothing has changed. The initial branch and the active branch, they still haven't changed because we only have one branch. But if you look at initial comet and the active comet, they're both different. The initial comet was the comet that we initially created. But since we created a second comet right now, the active comet has changed. We created a second comet and now we are working actively on that specific uh, comet and that is this one. This is the ID of the new comet that we created So if we go to uh, what else if we go to branches and we check out comets db.json We can see that we have now two comets this was our initial comet uh, and you and you know that because of the name and because of uh, the ID blah 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 
you can see that we have a new element inside children branch commit this is a combination of the branch id and the commit id and this is going to be basically uh, directing towards this commit so what does this mean this means that uh, this commit which is this this commit has inherited from this commit so this commit is the parent of this comet I hope that makes sense it might be a little bit confusing or very confusing I don't know but yeah uh, that's how it is this is the parent of this or you can say this comet has given birth to this comet and that is the reason why we have uh, this value over here inside children branch comet and the reason this is empty is because we just created this comet so there is nothing uh, you know there it has no children you can see that the ID is there the name is there this comment is there the branch ID and then we also have the inherited comment and inherited branch that is going to be basically uh, this one this one over here the inherited comet ID is going to be the same as the UID of the initial comet okay so uh, that's comets what else are we missing so we can now check out our snapshot the DB since we now have two comments we should also have two snaps there you wait a minute this is not it so we have two snaps this is the first snap and this is the second snap and the snaps are linked to their respective comments by the ID and there is nothing different because uh, we haven't added or removed any file and if, if we go to diffs and open one of the diff let's just open this one and uh, see this one we have two diffs because we changed the content of the file and we committed a new uh, and we made a new commit so we have uh, two diffs for a file this was the original diff and you know this because the is initial diff is true and then we have a second diff and the second diff uh, is not the initial one and you know this because the is initial diff is set to false and you can also see that the diff value right it's very different we have a bunch of symbols we have a numbers and this is basically uh, going to help us to determine how the uh, file content has changed from the initial diff to the current diff that we have okay so everything is looking good right there is nothing else to show except reverting back to the original initial commit so we have uh, this as our new uh, content we also have this as our new content but we want to re revert back to how it originally was how the how the project was originally structured let's add a new file as well dot let's just call it okay this is going to be our new file and yeah and let's also delete subfolder okay so let's say this is how our project looks right now and we want to revert back to how it initially was when we created the repository and we are going to be selecting three for that and let, when we select three and press enter you can see that our project is back to how it originally was when we created our repository the extra file that we had it got deleted and if we check out file.txt the content is back to how it originally was and we also got this folder as we originally had it and the content inside is also going to be exactly how it was initially so yeah that's what i have been working on in the past two weeks and i could have done more but i have been pro procrastinating a lot so it, it has been super slow so yeah that's gonna be it for the video i just made this video for the sake of making a video because i haven't posted anything in this ch channel lately so yeah that's gonna be it also you can ch check out my musical works my covers my originals in uh in my or uh, actual account that's going to be uh, linked in either the description or maybe somewhere. I don't know. You'll figure it out. So yeah, that's going to be it for the video. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching, everybody.